Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video what I want to do is talk about web accessibility. That means it's like how do you design your website with accessibility in mind. And if you're ever wondering like what are the things that you should consider, like this is W3C, like they're like the big, you know, committee that makes decisions on internet standards. They're the go-to, okay, and they have this guide here, okay, I'll, I'll link it in the video description. That kind of shows you all these different things you want to think about when you're doing uh, accessibility. Like, and people do audits of this. So, like, sometimes you'll have a company that's going to ask you to voluntarily, or a potential client is going to ask you to voluntarily audit your application to make sure that you know it's accessible because they want to meet their accessibility requirements that might actually be legally mandated on them. Okay, so while you have no legal requirement to do X. You might be dealing with institutions that do have a legal requirement of making sure that they are accessible, whatnot, because uh, of their size or the particular role they play or something like that. So this is a good thing to be aware of. And just like the basic principles, it's not hard to be accessible. OK, that's the first thing I want to say, like, you know, like, well, this is a concern. It's not the hardest thing to do in the world. You just have to think text, 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 and also just think about your color choices and and basically always think about like how can i give the user the control over something um when something is automatic okay so basically nothing should just be sort of outside the user's control so that way if they have sensory issues or attention issues they can stop the the animation that's distracting them or or, or causing them distress okay <coughs> so let me just uh we're going to create a quick html file okay and now here I'm going to create a button and it's going to say cheese. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So I will open this up with live server and there it is. There's a button that says cheese. Now if I open up the dev tools, okay, you can click this little guy here and this will allow you to select elements and you can hover over an element and see this button. See that section that says accessibility. That's sort of like the important thing. Okay. One, you want it to be keyboard focusable because maybe people aren't using a mouse. They're completely, um, because you know, they can't, if, if, if you're visually impaired, a mouse isn't necessarily like the most useful way to interface with a website. So you're gonna be very reliant on your keyboard. So having something that's keyboard focusable is important. So that way they can switch between different elements using their keyboard. Now the role and the name are also very important because a reader is gonna tell them, okay, is going to identify which things they can click on because they're a link or a button or something like that. Okay, and it knows it's a button because I used the button tag. Okay, that's the best way to go. Use a button tag, use a form tag because a reader knows what those are and it'll just, it'll know. And because I have text on the button, it knows the name of the button. It assumes the text that's related to the button is the name of the button. So basically the reader will be like button cheese. So they know it's a button that says cheese on it. Okay, that's great. And then you can see, like, you see right there with accessibility, you can see like contrast score. So like the text versus, um, you know, and again, so you can see here, like that black text over that really light gray is, is pretty decent. Okay. <clears throat> um, aside from that, uh, that's, so that's good. Now let's do something that's like bad. Okay, so let's say I create a div. Um, okay, and I don't write any text in it, and then I decide to style it. So I'm going to style it, and we're going to say the div, okay, is, you know, width of 100 pixels, height of 40 pixels, background color. black okay and now if I go over here to the thing like if I were to hover over that like and let's say I use it as a button so I like wrap it in an a tag or something and I do this okay it has no name and the role is generic so the reader would not know this is a button it would not know what this is clickable on so for example let's say I, I, I put like an emoji over it so let me go get an emoji so let's say UTF-8 emojis <clears throat> Okay. 
So I will just grab this kissy emoji. I will put that on the button. Okay, and let's choose font color. Color that's gonna be really kind of hard to read on that black. Like this should be pretty hard to read. Okay, so now if we go back to our website. Okay, now the emoji just looks like the emoji because it's the emoji. But again, see, there's no name because the emoji doesn't it doesn't represent any kind of text. So, like someone visually looking at the website know, might know what this means, but because that default, but also like if those if if it was just plain text and see like that brown on black is pretty hard to read so it gets a really low contrast score okay so that's bad so you want to and again Chrome Dev Tools are here to help you okay so you can use them and life will be okay but um yeah so you look at that contrast score and you can kind of be like oh yeah maybe that contrast isn't very good and um, I need to fix that role so then how do we fix that okay because what if I do really want this button to have to have that emoji in there so actually let me Okay, and let me just center that because it's going to kill me if I don't center it. Okay, and then let me just give it a little padding. Padding. Eight pixels. Let's just make it. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay, so there's my button. So I want I want the HTML to know that this is a button. Okay, so what I can do is I should be able to just type in here roll and say link or button either one okay and now when we hover over it roll button okay so that's good and now it's picking up on the it's picking up on the name on the emoji but that's still like probably not the ideal thing so i may want to do something like add another property like usually there's one called like area label okay and we'll just call this um kiss Okay, now I'm not quite sure uh, if this will pick up on that. Yep, it picks up on that. So you see, like, that name gets replaced with the ARIA label property. Okay, and that's cool. Okay, so now the reader will be like, this is a button called kiss. Okay, so even though I'm seeing this visually and I use the div, I could do that. Now, I could I could have saved myself some time and just used the button and styled the button. Okay, so this is why it's important to use, like, tags that have like semantic names and not just do a div for everything so that way the HTML can handle and this is also why like form tags you want to make sure you put labels and um, because that way it knows like which names go with which form elements things like that okay so that's that's so those that's like the low-hanging fruit now let's talk about some of the audio stuff <clears throat> okay um, but it's also, if you go through here, there's like a whole bunch of different things, like audio controls. Like, they want to make sure that, like, if there's ever, like, an audio thing or a video thing, that, that it's possible for users to be able to stop it. Okay? So, if it just auto plays and they don't have a way to stop it, that's bad. Okay? Um, you should be able to resize the text of the page without losing too much of the functionality of the page. So, you would want to, basically, what you would do is you just go over here, blow it up to 400. And then see how usable the page is still once you blow up uh, the page. Uh, really, 400 is what they require. So, like, it should still be kind of workable at this magnification. Um, again, everything should be fairly accessible by keyboard. So, the idea is that the, the way your elements are organized should be in a way that if you're like tabbing on a keyboard, that it makes sense. So, it shouldn't be like there's three form fields, like, there's three input boxes. I'm on the first input box, but I hit tab and it goes to like the navigation menu instead of the next input box. Okay, so this is why like wrapping in a form tag might make a lot of sense because it's going to give a little bit more hierarchy so that when you're tabbing on that keyboard, it makes more sense. Um, do, 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 this is looking for uh, making sure all your pages have titles, um, link purpose is what we were just talking about, like making sure they have names and okay. Um, Making sure that you know people can figure out where they are on the website, so you have like clear signage, um, what's going on. Also, using like having like navigation like buttons that are like images, and the images have text on them. The problem is like a reader cannot read the text on an image, so then making sure that those images have like alt 
uh, tags on them so that way people so that way basically they can be informative and you know things like that that can help suggest context in those situations okay um but yeah there's a bunch of little things here but i mean basically if you kind of follow along with what i've already said you're going to be in compliance with like 90 percent of these okay just things like here just saying hey how do you handle errors now if an error happens like how long does like the, the, the error message show up on the screen if there's like an alert and does it stick around until like they suggest it because what if there's someone who you know can't read as quickly and it's only there really quick like then you're you're affecting they're going to be there really to kind of understand what's kind of going on um you know clear instructions instructions at a low like reading level okay and then if you use like a really high reading level do you have something that kind of helps explain the text <clears throat> so that like, right there's reading level okay things that help kind of define unusual words and pronunciations um you know basically you can go through this and there's a whole bunch of stuff it was actually pretty pretty interesting read reading through all of this so um like re-authenticating so like what happens if they like you know what if they're staring at the page for a long time is it going to log them out i think lose everything they've already filled out because they paused for too long so making sure that like hey if they get logged out does it retain the state that they were at in a form or something like that afterwards and again the idea here is like none of this stuff is mandatory like this is none of this stuff is like oh you're gonna go to jail if you don't do it but the idea is that if you want to have a site that <clears throat> really kind of addresses all sort of all possible use issues um, this is good. This is a good thing to do in the same way. And again, at the end of the day, you want to make a website where you can have as many possible users as possible because that's going to mean people will use your website versus somebody else's website that doesn't. So caring about things like accessibility and addressing all these things, caring about responsiveness so people can use it on a mobile phone, uh, caring about these things, uh, all these aspects of web design, yes, it can be a lot of work. Caring about speed and efficiency so that way people with slower computers can use your website. But at the end of the day, like the less of these things you care about, if you have a site that requires a really fast computer, doesn't have really good accessibility, uh, doesn't have a really responsive design, you're saying, hey, only people with fast desktops can use your website. And <clears throat> that might be fine with you, but if you're looking to you know, access a huge audience, you might wanna make sure that you kind of cater to all possibilities. So like this is, these are just things to think about with good web design um, that you're thinking about, you're, you're constantly thinking about speed, accessibility, responsiveness, okay? Because all of these things are gonna make for a more pleasant user experience for more users, which means you'll have more users. Okay, it does mean more work, but if you follow best practices, again, using a button tag, uh, using high contrast color schemes, uh, you'll avoid a lot of the extra work because you'll just be doing it based on good design principles. So, and then the same thing, you know, you don't go out of your way to add extra JavaScript to your uh to your to your code this is where like static site generators that's going to help improve your speed and also improve accessibility because it's much easier for uh to navigate a, a static page for a reader um so that's all fine and good and responsiveness just you know using like one column designs which make responsiveness really easy um are always a good call all these kind of things can make life a lot easier in creating really responsive highly accessible websites that are super fast that people even with really slow there are people still with like dial-up speed type connections out there so worth thinking about my name is alex merced from alexmercedcoder.com have a great day and enjoy